Hello friends, this is your Yogananda, Biology Lecturer from Medal Academy YouTube channel. In this class, we are going to discuss one of the important topics from 12th Standard Biology. The topic is sexual reproduction. Tell me about the reproduction. Reproduction means production of their own kind of another organism is called as reproduction. Some organisms are producing their own kind of another organism by asexual method. But higher organisms are producing their own kind of another organism by sexual method. The sexual reproduction means reproduction that involves formation of male and female gametes that may be produced either by same individual or by different individual of the opposite sex, male and female organism. So whichever the organisms are produced through sexual reproduction, not identical to the parent or amongst themselves. So when you're comparing human being, uh, individuals born for same parent, not identical. That means not similar to that parent. It is an elaborate, complex and a slow process as compared to asexual reproduction. So that means sexual reproduction is a complicated process, not like asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is a simple method. The period of growth to reach in maturity for sexual reproduction is called as zonal period. In plants, it is called as vegetative phase. Vegetative stage followed by reproductive stage taken place in plants. In higher plants, the following indicates the end of vegetative phase. That means the beginning of reproductive phase. Annuals, biennial plants, show clear cut of vegetative, reproductive and senescent phases. That means annual plants can grow one year or one season within one year, produce flowers, fruits and lead to die. That means senescent. Biennial plants can take two seasons or two years to grow and produce flowers and fruits. That means first year that can utilize for the growth of vegetative parts. Second year, the development of reproductive parts takes place lead to die. So in annuals and biennials, so we can see clearly vegetative, reproductive and senescent phase. But in perennials, it is very difficult to identify. Because of perennials produce flowers and fruits every year. Some plants exhibit unusual flowering. For example, bamboo plant. Bamboo species flower only once in their lifetime after 50 to 100 years produce large number of fruits and lead to die. So in these cases, it is very difficult to identify a zonal period and reproductive as well as senescent period. Bamboo is an example for monocarpic perennial. What do you know about monocarpic perennial? A plants which are producing flowers and fruits only once in their lifetime are called as monocarpic perennials. So that too, these plants live several years. So they are called as uh, perennials. In another example, Strobilanthus kundiana, that plant uh, flowers once in 12 years. So in these cases, it is very difficult to identify the vegetative phase and the zonal period. That means vegetative phase as well as reproductive phase. In animals, zoonal phase is followed by morphological and physiological changes prior to active reproductive behavior. Birds living in nature lay eggs only seasonally. However, birds in captivity, that means poultry, can be made to lay eggs throughout the life. Sorry, that means throughout the year. The females of placental mammals exhibit cyclic changes. So we try to understand. In placental mammals, there are two rhythmic cyclic changes taking place in the ovary, such as estrous cycle and menstrual cycle. In non primates, such as cow, sheep, rat, deer, dog, tiger, etc., are commonly called as non primates. In non primates, estrous cycle takes place. In primates, such as monkeys, apes, and humans, menstrual cycle takes place. So, to try to understand, in placental mammals, there are two types of rhythmic cyclic changes taking place in the ovaries, especially in non-primates, estrous cycle takes place. 
in primates menstrual cycle takes place see the diagrammatic representation here given very clearly seasonal breeders non seasonal breeders that mean continuous breeders based on the breeding season mammals are classified into two types seasonal breeders mammals living in natural conditions exhibiting reproductive cycle only during favorable seasons say goat sheep cow dog cat dog example for seasonal breeders continuous breeders they are reproductively active throughout the reproductive phase plants the growth senescence period is given in the diagrammatic representation even in human being is given senescence mean old age it is a last stage of life span and the end of reproductive phase thereafter either plants or animals cannot reproduce during this uh, concomitant changes occur in the body example slowing of metabolism etc it is ultimately lead to death is before death that period is called as senescence period in plants and animals hormones cause transition between zoonotic reproductive and senescence phases interaction between hormones and environmental factors regulate the reproductive processes and the associated behavioral expressions of organisms so these are the certain changes taken place during senescence period so what are the events or stages which are taken place during sexual reproduction sexual reproduction takes place by three stages before fertilization fertilization after fertilization before fertilization what are the process which are taken place means gametogenesis and gamete transfer these are the two process or two events taken place during pre fertilization stage fertilization you are all know fusion of male and female gamete is called as fertilization after fertilization what are the changes which are taken place that all together called as post fertilization so let us discuss one by one first event is pre fertilization pre fertilization gametogenesis and gamete transfer these are the two process taken place the event prior to the fusion of gametes they include gametogenesis and gamete transfer taken place what do you know gametogenesis the formation of male and female gametes are called as gametogenesis gametes are haploid cells that contain only the half number of chromosomes the gametes of that mean haploid cells are two types homogametes or heterogametes homogametes are always called as isogametes isogametes are similar gametes they cannot categorize into male and female gametes example some algae like cladopora produce homogametes see the diagrammatic representation the first one a is given now while you are saying that that male and female gametes are not differentiated that means undifferentiated heterogametes means male and female gametes are distinct type male gamete is commonly called as anthrozoid or sperm the female gamete is called as egg ovum example fugus it is an algae human beings say the diagrammatic representation c so there the male gamete and the female gamete differ from one another so such kind of gametes are called as heterogametes if the gametes are not differentiated into male and female gamete that means both are similar called as isogametes the gametes are dissimilar called as heterogametes heterogametes seen in plants as well as in animals human being here some examples are given based on the sexuality organisms are classified into bisexual and unisexual what do you know about bisexual the male and the female reproductive sexes are present in the same individual called as bisexual see the diagram first diagram in the earthworm male and 
female reproductive structures or reproductive organs are present in the same organism same like in plants hibiscus and pisum flowers are both andesium and gynesium in the same flower in flowering plants male flower is commonly called as staminate and female flower is called as pistillate if male and female flowers are present on same plant called as monoecious example cucurbita and coconuts bisexual animals are commonly called as hermaphrodites example earthworm leech sponge tapeworm etc see the diagrammatic representation bisexual animals example earthworm unisexual animal cockroach monoecious plant cara the same plant both male and female sex organ is present dioecious plant marcantia bryophyte male and female thallus are separate bisexual flower sweet potato andesium and gynesium both are present in the same flower so it is commonly called as bisexual flower unisexual what do you know about unisexual the male and the female reproductive structures are present on different individuals see the diagrammatic representation cockroach the male and the female are separately given plant papaya and date palm male and female plants are separate unisexual animals such as cockroach higher animals etc and in human being male and female are separate fungi may be homothallic homothallic mean bisexual or heterothallic unisexual thallus what do you know about thallus the plant body is not differentiated into root stem and leaves are called as thallus cell division during gamete formation many monirans fungi algae and bryophytes are haploid parental body they produce haploid gametes by mitosis mostly in lower plants but in pteridophytes gymnosperms angiosperms and animals higher animals have diploid parental body they produce haploid gametes by meiosis of meiocytes gamete mother cell undergoes meiosis cell division see the flow chart human being a meiocyte contain 46 number of chromosome that is diploid during gametogenesis the actual number of chromosomes are reduced into haploid 23 chromosomes in gametes ausplex contain 12 chromosomes at the end of meiosis cell division the number of chromosomes are reduced into half number 6 rat in diploid 42 haploid 21 dog diploid condition 78 chromosomes in a haploid condition 39 chromosomes in cat 38 chromosomes in diploid condition in a haploid 19 chromosomes fruit fly diploid condition 8 chromosomes haploid condition 4 chromosomes hopioclasm contain the highest number of diploid number of chromosomes 1260 in a haploid condition 630 chromosomes haplo 34 chromosomes in diploid condition that mean meiocytes contain 34 at the end of gametogenesis the actual number of chromosomes reduced into 17 rice plant contain 24 chromosomes in diploid condition haploid condition 12 chromosomes maize 20 chromosomes in diploid condition haploid condition 10 chromosomes potato 48 in haploid condition 24 butterfly in diploid condition 380 haploid condition 190 chromosomes onion in diploid condition 32 chromosomes in haploid condition 16 chromosomes here clearly understand meiocytes are diploid gametes are haploid so in higher organisms a diploid number of chromosomes reduced into haploid number by meiosis cell division in lower organisms gametogenesis takes place by mitosis cell division so once the gametogenesis process getting over the gametes are transferred from male 
gametophyte to female gametophyte. The male gametes need a medium to move towards female gamete for fertilization. In most of the organisms, male gamete is motile and the female gamete is stationary. That means male gamete movable, female gamete immovable. In some fungi and algae, both the type of gametes are motile. In simple plants, especially in algae, bryophytes and tendophytes, Gamete transfer takes place through water. So without water, they cannot complete their life cycle. In lower plants, without water, fertilization not takes place. To compensate the loss of male gamete during transport, large number of male gametes are produced. In seed plants, pollen grains, that means anthers carry male gametes, and the ovule carries the egg, pollen grains are transferred to stigma. So try to understand how does the male gametes are transferred to female gametes. In bisexual plants are self-fertilizing plants. Example, peas, anther and stigma are close to each other. So transfer of pollen grain is easy. Mostly bisexual plant. Self-fertilization, that means self-pollination followed by self-fertilization only takes place in grass pollinating plants, including diocese plants. The pollination helps in transfer of pollen grains. Pollen grains germinate on the stigma and the pollen tube carrying male gametes to reach the ovule and discharge male gametes near the egg. In diocese animals, the fertilization helps for successful transfer and the coming together of gametes. So try to understand what is monoecious and diocious. Diocious animals are uh, separate. That means male and female organisms are separate. Monoecious means both male and female reproductive structures are present in the same organism. So that you try to understand clearly. Then what do you know about fertilization? Fertilization is a, a service called as syngamy. The fusion of male and female gamete is called as fertilization. The result of fertilization is zygote formation takes place. In rotifers, honeybees, some lizards, birds such as turkey, etc., the female gamete develops to new organism without fertilization. This process is called as parthenogenesis. See the diagrammatic representation. Here the honeybee diagrams are given. Female honeybee produce eggs through meiosis cell division. So that means female honeybee contain 32 chromosomes in diploid condition. During gametogenesis, the actual number of chromosomes are reduced into a half floyd. A diploid female bee produce egg through meiosis cell division. But the male honeybee contain only a haploid number of chromosomes. So it produces male gametes through mitosis cell division. No meiosis, that means through mitosis cell division. So if the fertilization takes place in between male and female gametes, the female bee formation, deployed female bee formation takes place. If the fertilization not takes place, the egg directly develops into haploid male bees. This process is called as Parthenogenesis. So the fertilization takes place, female bee formation takes place. Without fertilization, egg directly develops into a haploid male bees are called as parthenogenesis. What are the types of fertilization? Fertilization broadly categorized into two types: external fertilization and internal fertilization. What do you know about external fertilization? The fertilization takes place outside of the body. I mean, external medium such as water. Zygote is formed outside the body. In most aquatic organisms, such as uh, algae, in many algal species, bony fishes, etc., and amphibians, fertilization takes place outside of the body. See the diagrammatic representation. Frog releases, male frog releases sperm into the water as same like female frog releases egg into the water. So fertilization takes place outside of the body, even in fishes. 
such organism show synchrony between the sexes and release large number of gametes into the surrounding medium to ensure syngamy. Uh, what are the disadvantages of uh, external fertilization? The offsprings are extremely vulnerable to predators threatening their survival up to adulthood. So maybe have chance to getting damage from predators. So that is one of the disadvantages given. See the diagrammatic representation. Internal fertilization example is given. Here syngamy occurs inside the body of organism. That means fertilization takes place inside of the body. Example terrestrial organisms belonging to fungi, animals such as reptiles, birds, mammals and plants including bryopies, teredopies, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Fertilization takes place inside of the body. In this, non-motile egg is formed inside the female body to where motile male gamete reaches and it fuses. So your fertilization takes place in the female reproductive part. In seed plants, the non-motile male gametes are carried to female gamete by pollen tubes. There is a large number of sperms produced, but the number of eggs is very low in internal fertilization. So what is the difference between external fertilization and internal fertilization? External fertilization takes place outside of the body. Internal fertilization takes place inside of the body. The result of fertilization is zygote. A zygote undergoes further developmental process by mitosis cell division. The development of zygote depends on the type of life cycle of the organism, the nature of environment. In fungi and algae, zygote develops a thick wall that is resistant to desiccation, drying, and damage. It undergoes a period of rest before germination. In organisms with diplontic life cycle, zygote divides by meiosis into haploid spores that grow into haploid individuals. So what are the different types of life cycle that also we are going to discuss? Haplontic life cycle, diplontic life cycle, haplodiplontic life cycle. Sexually reproducing organisms begin life as zygote. So you hang one dollars from zygote. Zygote is the vital link between organism of one generation and the next generation. So zygote undergoes the repeated mitosis cell division. In diplontic life cycle, as a result, embryogenesis takes place. What is embryogenesis? The development of embryo from zygote is called as embryogenesis. Zygote undergoes a repeated cell division. As a result, it develops into embryo. During embryogenesis, zygote undergoes cell division. That means what kind of cell division? Mitosis cell division followed by cell differentiation takes place. The cell division increases the number of cells in the embryo. Cell differentiation causes a modification of group of cells into various tissues and organs to form an organism. So during cell differentiation, the cells are differentiated into simple complex uh, like the tissues. Based on the place of zygote development, animals are classified into two types. Oviparous and viviparous. OV, what is the meaning of OV? Egg. Egg laying animals are called as oviparous. Giving birth, young one are called as viviparous. So, try to understand the diagrammatic representation. Hen is given. Animal lay fertilized or unfertilized egg. In reptiles and birds, the fertilized egg covered by hard calcareous shell are laid in the same place. After incubation, young one hatch out. So this kind of embryogenesis is called as oviparous. The second diagram, viviparous. The zygote develops into young one inside the female body. Later, the young ones are delivered out of the body. Example, most of the mammals, because of proper care and protection, the chances of survival of young ones are greater in viviparous animals because of the embryonic development takes place inside of the body. 
Thank you very much for listening our videos. Just watching our videos, you are requested to like, subscribe, and share to your friends. In the next class, let us discuss about uh, human reproduction. All the best.